Wesley, a nice first round win. Tell us what happened. Um, well, Mapon played the English opening, so I went C4E5. I was trying to unbalance the game. Uh, and then I went for the Rook 8 Bishop F8 setup. And I, I've actually played this setup before from Isle of Man two years ago. Uh, so knight e4, knight d4, all this. Um, so I wasn't sure if he prepared it, but then he started thinking. So I felt very comfortable at least I get a game. And uh, I managed to unbalance the pawn structure a little bit. And uh, he made a mistake, and his position was not very easy anymore after bishop e6. Then he blundered upon after that. All I have to do was to prevent his queen from becoming too active. Right. In fact, it seemed like a very normal classical English position, and then suddenly the b2 pawn could not be defended. Yeah, well, he blundered with e3. I think he made some mistakes already beforehand. But this position is actually very complex because, uh, surprisingly, it's black who has a space advantage in the opening. If, you know, he has backward pawns on e2, b2, and I think my a5 was a very important move because otherwise I'm going to play b4 and get some, some space. When I played a5, then uh, he also missed rook e5, which is a very strong resource in this position. It depends. Defends everything on the fifth rank. Um, so, yeah, made a few mistakes. So, actually, this uh, English system looks very solid for white, but it's uh, very unbalanced. I think Maxim MBL also plays like this with black. Right, you made a very interesting point about trying to make uh, the opening unbalanced, get an unbalanced middle game out of it, despite being black. Now, this is something very important for open events to take your chances and try and create something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For because uh, if uh, if we draw every game, it's really gonna hurt. So, we the worst thing that can happen is for the lower rated to just follow book moves and uh, make a thirty move, make a force draw, for instance. I think he also plays e4, and against the knight he plays bishop g5, for example. And there's a lot of doorwish positions here, so we gotta balance things a little bit, like. Uh, if you look at Hikaru's games against e4, in open tournaments, he usually plays g6, avoids his usual Berlin. Um, we're trying to get lower rated players out of the book as quickly as possible. Now, this is your first time here in Gibraltar, early days, but how are you liking it so far? Well, I'm very pleased. I, I like the tournament. Uh, um, we like Stuart Conquest, seems to be a very great guy and also a sponsor, Brian Callahan. So everything's good so far. Uh, we arrived here early, and uh, I like the place. Just a little island and uh, good weather and good good food. And also a lot of uh, strong players. I think this is very similar to the Isle of Man Open Tournament, which are some of the strongest open tournaments in the world. Um, so very excited to be here. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to see how the games go. Well, my main focus is try to get some good games, <laughs> try to get my ranking back up, because a lot of players are trying to kick me out of the top 10. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh, I played in why can't say I think, nine times, and it's my first time here in Gibraltar. So um, it's a very good change. Well, we are very pleased to have you here. Now you played in the Isle of Man, like you mentioned, and you're in Gibraltar. There is this whole shift of playing more and more open events. Why Why do you think that's happening? Um, well, I think organizers are trying to mix things up a little bit. Uh, it also gets quite stale if I play the same opponent seven or 10 times a year. For example, the Grand Chester has more events this year, so that means I'll be playing each player like 10 times a year, including <laughs> Rapid and Blitz. So I think people want to change people Spectators want to see uh, new faces showing up and uh, uh, new openings, and just gives a bit more of a more of an excitement. Now you're not only mixing things up in choosing your tournaments, but even here now after this game, you have your Pro Chess League match. Yeah, definitely. I I think uh, there are a few players here playing. For example, I'm playing Ivan Sarik in the Montreal Chess Brass tonight. <laughs> so it'll be played uh, at around midnight. <laughs> so I'm going to take a nap now and then wake up at 11 in the evening. But it's not only me. I mean, Hikaru is also playing today at 3.30 in the morning. 
Well, we're very loyal to our team, and tonight we have a crucial matchup. Well, that's an amazing spirit, and you've got a long night ahead of you. We wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thanks.